and you are experiencing Nuestra Palabra, Latino Writers having to say on the air. We got a full house. This is Tony Diaz, Libre Traficante. We got Q running the boards, as you always expect. Marlene is working the phones. We got our... Yo, 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 yo. Hello, we're back. You're back. Rachel is back. <laughs> Maria is back. <laughs> how, how was the conference? How was the National Hispanic uh, Journalism Conference? San Antonio? Oh, my God. It was awesome. Amazing, amazing. Fun. That's good. Well, we're glad that you're fired up and share that enthusiasm and helping us get the word out. Welcome back. Thank you. And next on the air, we have Pablo de Leon joining us through the magic of telephony. He is an athlete, writer, and actor. His book is called Limitless, Sin Limites, a book that is motivational. And he's also produced and acted in two full features. And he's currently working on another full feature film. We're happy to have him on the air. Hey, Pablo, thanks for calling in. Hey, thanks, Tony. I appreciate you having me. No, by all means. So tell us where you're calling in from. Where in the world are you in right now? <laughs> I'm actually in Dallas right now. We forgive you. The Cowboys. We, right. we forgive you for that. No, just, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. And are you a native of Dallas? <laughs> I am now, yes, sir. Fantastic. Well, great. No, and of course, you know, Dallas, of course, you got the Dallas uh, Cultural Museum there, which is very nice, the Latino Cultural Center, which I've had the pleasure of reading at. Very nice situation. Uh, you got oh, Caramia nice. Theater. Tambien, so we've got a lot of hermanos, hermanas out there that we're proud to work with. Oh, well, that's great. I mean, I definitely like to connect with them because I haven't had a chance to, to go out there at all. Gotcha. <laughs> and, I know Carmona hasn't told me about it, so I might be going over there with him. Awesome, man. Of course, you know, you're talking about one of our favorite Libre Taficantes, one of our favorite yes. pro Gabriel is, is that hermano, is that, uh, you know, a lot for the community, so we're all connected right. through us. We were happy to to get to network with you through him and happy to have you on the air and, and uh, tell us about the projects you're working on. So, so tell us a little bit more. Tell people, tell people uh, how they can get to your websites and your social media. Yes. So the website is www.pablo-deleon.com. There you'll have all of my social media that follow through that website. And so anything you might need to know about me, you can go there. Um, the social media handles are I am Pablo De Leon. <clears throat> I am Pablo De Leon on all of them, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. And that's, those are the three main ones that I use the most. And tell us about the film that you're working on right now. So the current film that I'm working on is – actually, there's about four full features that I'm working on. But the one that we're actually shooting now um, is called The Real Life Cowboy. That's about a – sort of a document film about a fictional character – that was, is on the verge of retiring from Major League Baseball. And now he's, he's, he's a future Hall of Famer. But now things start to leak that he's uh, possibly been using you know, illegal steroids. Mm. And so, so that's, that's one of them. The other one is called Peony Park, working with Jay Dixon out of uh, L.A. She's a, she's a great di female director, and she called me up early this year and wanted me to jump on this project with her, which I was really excited because I know the kind of work she produces. And it's uh, <clears throat> really, really, you know, pretty good quality. So now, I look to – go ahead. Now, so then in your capacity, you can work on both because I imagine you're doing several different activities for each film, right? Absolutely. And break, break that down for us, especially for a lot of our listeners who are mostly yeah. writers uh, and probably doing, like, poetry or novels and not really familiar with film. Right. So, like Carmona, you know, one of our, 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 one of our mutual friends, mm -hmm. he's actually working with me on a project on a hard day film. I don't want to expose the title just yet, but he's actually doing most of the writing on the, the film that I'm personally working on, the Lucido film. And the other two projects that I work, I also, as a producer and actor, I work with other productions, simply because they also, you know, you got to have a team. You can't do films on your own. I know there's a lot of guys out there that think that they can do it on their own. You just can't. It's not possible. You need a team. So I'm glad to have Carmona, you know, join me with the Seagull films, and I'm glad to be a part of other productions where it, 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 you know, it gives you more exposure. It gives you more experience to work with other producers as well. 
And so it is a lot of work, a lot of behind the scenes stuff because you have to first establish the idea into a script, a screenplay. And then from screenplay, then you start putting the team together that sort of fits the vision of where and of the film that you're trying to produce, choosing the right talent for the right roles, so that the film can be a Hollywood film, and that's what we're trying to achieve here. That sounds exciting, and of course, it is very different than say writing your own collection of short stories or your own novel, where you're the you're the universe, you know, and it's just you uh, ruminating on the different aspects. Um, here you are, like you're saying, building that team. It sounds like several layers, and I imagine two playing off each other. So, uh, would that be the case that you're trying to get people on the team who can play off each other and build on each other's strengths? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the main reasons why I became a producer is because most of my passion is to be an actor. And in order for me to have a long-term career, I have to take on the role as a producer to constantly keep producing content. And so because otherwise you're going to be that actor who's looking for the next job always. But in this case, <clears throat> I get called from other productions who offer me a job to join them on their pro uh, their uh, their project. And then I still continue to work on mine so that I can continue branding myself. And that's some of the things that I continue to, to put into some of these actors that really want to take their career serious to, to become a, a producer, to produce your own content. <clears throat> because then your odds are going to be very slim if you don't. Well, and it also sounds like the actors that are waiting for the roles to appear uh, are going to get basically trapped where, uh, you know, in my opinion as a writer – who who's watch, watches TV sometimes or films, there's not a lot of roles in mainstream uh, Hollywood that really, to me, seem to really push uh, actors from our community to the top level. I, I mean, you know, in my humble opinion, uh, I, you know, and I think that's been the argument, there's not a representation. <laughs> yeah. Would you agree with that? I mean, I don't think that's too radical. I, I, no, I, I totally agree with okay. you. I mean, the, one of the main reasons why I took on the role of producer was going back to what I think the point you were trying to make was I, I as a Latino did not want to be typecast. I didn't want it to be because all my life people would call me, Oh, you're going to be the next Eric Estrada. And I was tired <laughs> of hearing that over and over saying, you're going to be the next Eric Estrada. I'm not Eric Estrada. And so one of the roles that I try to stay away from, and it's, you know, was to be a cop because otherwise immediately everybody's going to say, Eric Estrada. And so nothing wrong with Eric Estrada. I just didn't want to be tight cast as Eric Estrada. And nor did I want to be, you know, the you know, gangster or the long guy or the you know, the con the construction guy. You know, I wanted to be the, the next uh, Latino um in Hollywood that brings influence, a positive influence and a good representation on our culture. Well, and even and as so you say that Eric Estrada gets typecast as Eric Estrada. In that, here you You're have, right. you know, and his Boricua, if I understand correctly, uh, someone's Boricua finally, you know, gets a role, but he never gets to go beyond that role, uh, winds up getting ridiculed for that role as yeah. well. And you're right, there, there is the irony, there is the irony of, of our community situation in the hands of mainstream Hollywood. Your answer... Right. For film is very similar to what we decided to do for Nuestra Palabra and Libre Traficantes is saying wow. we got to do it ourselves. That's great. I mean, you have to. If you don't, then, then we're just defined by every, what everybody else wants us to be. And, um, and as an artist, uh, I, we don't like to be, you know, be put in a box where we're just um, limited by our artistic, you know, and being able to share the beauty of our culture as well. And it sounds like not only do you get to expand your imagination, but you're also getting work in other capacities, building yeah. networks, and learning how all, all every part of the, the industry works. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's and exciting. That's a grind, let me tell you. It's a <laughs> lot of work, but when you, like, you know, like anything else, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. Now, you've mentioned three of the, three of the projects. Um, what's the fourth project that you're working on right now, specifically in the film, in the film area? So, aside from, or specifically in the film? 
So I, I think I think you mentioned uh, I think you've told us about three of them, and you mentioned you're working on fourth. What's the fourth? What's the fourth project? Well, right now we finished one that we're actually now in distribution. I've been with working with Team Grind for about five, a little over five years. Tell us how that and works. Yeah, tell us how the distribution. Well, yeah, it's side funny works. because I get it's natural here the movie, and I and when I go to these Q and As or some of these premieres, I get asked the question like, "Dude, how did you get on this project?" <laughs> you know, because it, <laughs> yeah, and so well, it's simple. Producers produce. I mean, you know, you have the Aurora brothers that were business partners, one of the producers with Tyler Perry, and he was, they were business partners for 18 years, and Aurora, he's a Cuban um, native, and so he's um, worked with him for 18 years. Now he started his own division. He actually bought Tyler Perry's old studio, 70, I think like 77 acres of land, while Tyler Perry upgraded to 300 acres of land. <laughs> Yeah, so now he has the largest Latino-owned studio in America, and that's in a. I I uh, my I would think that his goal is to give a lot of other Latinos opportunities and getting us more exposure and getting this out there. So I know I would love to work with him one day on some of the projects that I'm working on. Exactly, specifically the one that Carmona is working with, working on with me. That's exciting, and, and but and yeah. it sounds like you're also saying that. Because of your work on that production side, now you're on the diffusion side, but it's it's also giving you uh, an understanding of how the business works. But then yeah. you're in terrains where people's like, "Hey, did you just come out of nowhere?" And you're like, "No, no, son, I've been working. My, yeah, I've been working like that." That's exactly right. And you know what? That started happening to me with some of the peers that were close to me, and they were like, "Dude, when did you do this? When did you just come out and do this?" I was like. I've been in class with you, and you already up here. How did you get up here? Well, it's the same thing I've been saying before: is you have to create your own content. And one of the things I always say is that if you put the des your destiny in the hands of someone else, casting directors, then you may never get that opportunity, and you're limited. Yeah. So I, I didn't allow myself. I created my own opportunities, and therefore other opportunities start opening up for me. That's exciting. So, okay, we mentioned Eric Estrada's Boricua. You mentioned Aurora Brothers, Cuban American. What what part of the Latino family tree are you from? And uh, we, Mexico. We, eso, eso, Mexico, eso. Mexico lindo. Eso <laughs> <laughs> sí. Uh, I was born in Ciudad Mier, Tomalipas. Eso. My parents were from Zacatecas, and they brought me here when they relocated. Um, they brought me here when I was four years old. And so I didn't really, you know, I got I actually graduated a little too late because <clears throat> I know everybody in school always saw me as this older guy. <laughs> well, it's because it's because I couldn't speak English, and it didn't. They had to put me back in order to because I couldn't comprehend everything. And so until I actually was able to speak English and understand everything. Gotcha. And so, and when I did I said back a year, but still, you know, you make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and when did the artistic side of you get 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 uh, formulated? Was it early? Was it later? Oh, man, you know that's a good question. It was early on. I used to do a lot of artwork, and my father even said that one day you're going to be an artist. But it wasn't until one day um, a family comes by, and on Lovers Lane, which is the street I grew up on. They saw me as this Latino kid. I said, man, all Latinos know how to play baseball. Let's go recruit him. <laughs> and so they recruited me and my brother. And, they, you know, they went to my parents and asked me, asked them if they would allow them for us to play ball with them. And so we did. So baseball just took me in a whole different direction. And it wasn't until I finally realized, you know, uh, I'm done. Um, I did go through a little identity crisis there for a while because, Baseball was my main focus at the time. But you were an athlete. And, I mean, you were an athlete. Uh huh. I was an athlete. Yes, sir. So you're good at so, it. You, you can hit a fa you can hit a curve. Oh, I can hit it. Dang, I see. <laughs> so the worst one is the changeup. Believe it or not, the worst is the changeup because it looks like a fastball. Ball. It's so manipulating. Yeah. God. Gotcha. So it's not the curveball. The curveball you can see it coming um, if you're you know trained to do so. But the the changeup is what the worst. Gotcha. Because it's like you have a 100-mile-an-hour baseball, and all of a sudden 
you, the pitcher releases with the same you know velocity, but it, it's 30 miles an hour you know, <laughs> lower, <laughs> and it just dies out and looks like a fastball. But yeah, so and, you know, I started when I had a, a young brother that passed away um, back in '08. It really certainly surfaced a lot of things in my life. Acting being, you know, one because I needed something to channel what I was going through, and so that's when I started pursuing my acting career. It was an outlet, and uh, sure enough, everything started falling into place, and opportunities started opening up. Uh, and let me let me be clear about this: I took acting classes. <laughs> you know how many people come to me and say, "I want to be an actor," but they've never taken acting classes, and I say, "Are you going to take acting classes?" And a year later, I asked them, because they wanted an opportunity, have you taken acting classes? They still haven't taken acting classes. I said, then you really don't want to act. That's a great point. You know, and so I just just for the audience out there, I took acting classes because I wanted to be an actor. I put the work in, and I created content. So you got to put the grind in. Yeah. yeah. You got to put the grind in. That's fantastic. And then, of course, like you say, too, there's probably some transferable skills from being a, a, a baseball player where, you know, you know, you got you got to practice or else you can strike out. It's pretty simple. So, yeah, that's good, obvious. Good, good, good to apply that to the yeah. to the film industry. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And so but I'm so- glad that I'm able to have had that background because I don't, you know, I'm able to deal with all of the characters. And, you know, some people get stuck in the characters, and they don't know how to separate that. Well, thank God that I have the sports background where we're taught to just do it. Don't think too much about it. You know, <clears throat> and I noticed that some of these artists, they, you know, they, they think a lot. They think too much. And so, and that's okay as long as you know how to separate yourself from all that. And as long as you don't miss an opportunity by, by taking too long. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's wonderful to get to meet you. Thank you so much for calling in. Please and, keep us posted uh, on your work, and let us know yeah, when sorry. you're doing some screenings, brother. Thank you so much, and definitely, we'll definitely see you some passing, my brother. Look forward to it, and we, we will be I sad. We will be sad and insulted if one of your films don't screen in Houston. So let's get to work on that. Oh, that's right. We'll be there. Thanks Gracias. so much, Tony. Gracias, Gracias bueno. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, you are listening to Nuestra Palabra, Latino writers having their say on the air. Thanks for tuning in. Another great show that is breaking all the barriers and empowering our community. That's how we do it, right? That's how we do it. Eso. Eso. Hey, this is Tony Diaz, Diva Let's get some shouts out from everyone over there. 